Good day everyone. I do hope that you are doing well today. This day, we are going to learn about an idea that is concerned with studying the comparison of two languages, that is to determine their similarities and differences. Also, it predicts the difficulty problems of the learners in acquiring the second language. I am referring to Contrastive Analysis Hypothesis Contrastive Analysis Hypothesis is an area of comparative linguistics that focuses on the comparison of two or more languages in determining the differences or similarities between them. It implies about the belief in language universals. That is, if there were no features in common, then there would be no basis for comparison. Furthermore, it highlights the similarities and differences of the first language and the second language. It also seeks to predict and explain the second language learners' difficulty problems. A pioneer scholar, Roberto Lado, presented the contrastive analysis hypothesis in his book, Linguistic Across Cultures, in year 1957. He stated that We can predict and describe the patterns that will cause difficulty in learning and those that will not cause difficulty by comparing systematically the language and culture to be learned with the native language and culture of the students. This means that through systematic comparison of a language and culture of the target language and the language and culture of its native language, then we can predict and explain the patterns that causes the difficulty of learning the second language and those that will not cause. There are three claims that govern the contrastive analysis hypothesis. These are the three versions. The strong version, the weak version, and the moderate version. Rooted in behaviorism and structuralist approaches, the interference of the first language system with the second language system is the main barrier to the second language acquisition resulting to difficulty in learning the second language. To get along with our discussion, let us define first what is a language interference. It refers to the effect of a language learner's first language on their production of the language that they are learning or their tar target language. The effect can be in any aspect of language. This can be in the grammar, vocabulary, accent, spelling, and so on. This further presents the idea of positive and negative transfer. When the influence of the native language differs from the use of a target language, then we can say that negative transfer or interference happens. In the other hand, when the influence of the native language leads to immediate acquisition of the target language because it has similarities, then we are talking about positive transfer or what we call as facilitation. This is supported by Banathy, Trager, and Weddell 1966 that says the change that has to take place in the language behavior a foreign language student can be equated to the differences between the structure of the student's native language and culture and that of the target language and culture. The strong version can be summarized as this. The difference of the first and second language is due to the interference of the first language and the second language that results to the difficulty in learning the second language. 
According to Whitnam 1970, these are the procedures in predicting language difficulty. Description, selection, contrast, and prediction. In description, we describe the two languages which is most likely the native language and the second language. Next is the selection. We select items or structures which do not exist in L1 and exist in L2 and vice versa. Moving on, we have contrast, in which we contrast those items which we have previously selected. The last step is prediction, in which we predict what will be difficult and what is not. Clifford Prater, 1967, encapsulate the essence of the grammatical hierarchy in which it was coined out by Stockwell, Brown, and Martin, 1965, in their hierarchy of difficulty. This is through categorizing difficulty into six categories. It was applicable to both grammatical and phonological features of the language. Let us observe this table from the internet source having these categories and their respective description and examples. First is the level zero or transfer. This is the level where there is no difference or contrast between two languages. The learner can simply transfer sound, structure, or lexical item from the native language to the target language. Say for example, mortal in English is also the same in Spanish. The next one is level one, the coalescence. The coalescence of the two items in the native language become into essentially one item in the target language or it converged. Say for example, the possessives require gender distinction, which is his or her, and in Spanish, they do not, or they use su. The level 2 is what we call under differentiation. An item in the language or the native language is absent in the target language. The learner must avoid that item. Example, adjectives in Spanish require gender, that is alto or alta. The level 3 is reinterpretation, on which an item that exists in the native language is given a new shape or distribution. See, for an instance, new phonemes require new distribution of speech articulators. Level 4 is over-differentiation. There is no similarity between the native language and the second language. Thus, it is a new item entirely. For example, English speakers must learn the use of determiners in Spanish, that is, man and el hombre in Spanish. The level 5 is the split. One item in the native language becomes two or more, or diverge. In the target language requiring the learner to make a new distinction. Say for example, the French word li and la both referring to the article the in the English. Furthermore, there is also a weak version of the contrastive analysis hypothesis, which states that linguistic difficulties are explained as a posteriori instead of predicting it a prior. This is to understand the sources of error by utilizing and contrasting a general knowledge of L1 and L2. This version suggests that in second language learning, the first language does not necessarily interfere with this learning so much. It says that when the learner does not know anything about the target language, his resort is the native language. From this point of view, it suggests that what will be most difficult for the learner is what he does not know yet. This is summarized through this.
the limited knowledge of L2 is to recourse the L1, which results the difficulty in learning the second language. Wardo 1970, in his assertion of the weak version of CH, stressed the strong versus weak version of the CH. In strong version, it is a priori prediction. This means that CH can predict and describe the linguistic patterns that causes difficulty in learning. Meanwhile, in the weak version, it is a posteriori explanation. This means that the CAH can explain difficulties and errors, but not all errors. Lastly, we have this moderate version or subtle differences of the CAH according to Zio Seni 2006. In this model, rather than causing difficulty, the difference of L1 and L2 items are more likely to be noticed and categorized. This perspective is based on the principle of stimulus generalization, in which it states that the more similar two stimuli are, the more likely a person is to respond to them as if they were the same stimulus. Thus, when the learner is faced with such condition, he may generalize a response learned to one stimulus. This is in return could create confusion on the side of the learner. The moderate version of CA was based on the study of spelling errors. Zayseni 2006 believes that for learners of English as a second language, English spelling proved to be more difficult for people whose native language used a Roman script, for example, French or Spanish, than for those whose native language used a non-Roman script, such as Arabic or Japanese. Furthermore, According to Oller and Zayaseni 1970, the categorization of abstract and concrete patterns according to their perceived similarities and differences is the basis for learning. Therefore, wherever patterns are minimally distinct in form or meaning in one or more systems, confusion may result. In contrast, if patterns are functionally equivalent in a system, correct generalization may occur. This suggests that the most difficult part is learning the sounds, sequences, and meanings, where the most subtle distinctions are required either between the target and native language or within the target language. Nevertheless, there is a criticism of CAH. These are the shortcomings of contrastive methods. First, it is an oversimplified process. There is also no exact distinction among categories, and there are problems in verifiability of difficulty level predictions. Amidst this criticism, contrastive analysis hypothesis is still a useful tool in its goal for effective second language learning and teaching. I do hope that you have inculcated something in this discussion. Thank you so much!